Hi, my name is Bhaskar Napte, uh, the founder of Pharma Growth Hub. And uh, let us talk about few important inter equations. And when it comes to method validation, linearity is the important parameter. So in this discussion, we are going to talk about the three important inter equations related to linearity. And this is the part one. We will have the part two, part three in the upcoming videos so what is the first question that comes to your mind or before we discuss about the question let us understand what is mean by linearity so linearity is an ability of uh, analytical procedure to obtain a response which is directly proportional to the concentration of an analyte so the response can be in terms of absorbance value for uv spectroscopy or peak area in case of chromatography. The concentration of analyte can be in terms of microgram per ml or ppm. So here is the first question which is uh, on the screen. That is for which techniques linearity is performed. So we understand the linearity with two important factors. One is response and another one is concentration. So unless and until there is a response received out of your analytical experience, will you be able to draw linearity? I mean, you can prepare the concentrations of analyte at different levels, but unless and until there is a response received from the measurement technique, you will not be able to draw a linearity. So for example, you are performing the identification test by FTIR. So in this technique, you are not going to quantify any of the response, but you will just understand whether the, the spectra are concurrent with each other or not. I mean the spectra of standard and spectra of sample are concurrent with each other or not. Now where is the quantification during this assessment? Not at all. So unless and until there is a response received, you will not be able to draw a linearity. And that's what it makes to answer this point that the linearity is only performed for analytical procedure with detectors like HPLC, GC, UV, etc. with the measurable response. So I would like to correct this answer with measurable response i mean you can have the uv spectroscopy used for the identification test but in this procedure are you measuring any response not so for linearity the detector is very important and the detector which gives the measurable response is the second important point so in case of HPLC, your detector can be, let us say, UV, or it can be a refractive index, or it can be ELST, or any another sort of, which is giving the measurable response, maybe in terms of peak area or the peak height. Now this is a signal that you are receiving that can be compared against the varied concentration. So this is the first requirement to perform the linearity study. The second question, what will you do if linearity fails? Now this is something very much practically possible. I mean, you have in your mind that, okay, I need to draw linearity from, let us say 10% to 200% concentration levels. But it's your wish. You never know what is the detector's linearity fall. What is the concentration within which your analyte will receive a linear response? So in case if the linearity fails, are you going to say that no, 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 my method is not at all acceptable because it is not a linear method? Probably the concern is not your analytical method, but concern is the detector's response. So detector response you know it's not just linear within 
your selected concentration range. So in case if the linearity fails, you are free to modify the concentration range. You can narrow down the concentration range. So for example, as I said earlier, you have selected the concentration range from 10% to 200%. For some reason, it is not linear. You can understand based on to the studied data between which two concentration ranges my method could be linear. For example, from 50 to 150 percent. And then you practically run the experiment by, you know, changing the concentration ranges, narrowing the window now at 50 to 150 percent and then proving, yes, now my method is linear. So in case if your method is found to be non-linear, at the wide concentration range, you can certainly redefine the linearity by narrowing the concentration ranges. But be aware of minimum requirements of the ICH. It is very important. So in case of assay, your linearity range should not fall below 80 to 120. For content uniformity, 70 to 130. For related substances, reporting threshold to 120 percentage of your specification level. Is linearity requirement as per ICH and NVISA Brazil same? And the answer to this question is absolutely no. Now this is the one parameter at which these two different regulators differs. So let us talk about the ICH requirement first and what ICH says. ICH says that you need to draw a linearity with minimum five concentration levels out of one weight stock solution. For example, if you are conducting the linearity of an um, assay, so you can prepare a one stock solution of your drug substance and then subsequently you can dilute from it to a five different concentration levels. Maybe let us say at 50%, at seven, uh, 50 ppm, at 75 ppm, the third can be at 100 ppm, the fourth can be at 125 ppm, and finally the fifth can be at 150 ppm. Now this is your five different concentrations levels, but you prepared all these levels by using the one stock solutions, by using one stock solution. Now, what is the NVISA requirement? NVISA says that you need to draw a minimum five different concentration levels, but you need to prepare three individual stock solutions. And from that three individual stock solutions, you need to prepare five different concentration levels. So each stock solution or each weight of your drug substance will have its five different concentrations linearity solutions. The second weight will again have its own five different concentration level of linearity solutions. And then again, third stock will again have the five different concentration linearity solutions. So this way, in totality, in VISA can have the 15 number of linearity solutions. Five for each individual weight stock solution. So this is the difference between ICH and NVISA. So these are the three questions we discussed in part one. In part two, we will discuss three more questions related to the linearity study. Thank you so much.